Hello everyone, and welcome to the wildest catch and cook this side of the Mississippi. Today, our goal is to harvest everything we eat at camp from the river and from the woods with these two bear paws right here. Amidst a crazy fall storm, the wind's blowing, the rain's gonna fall, and we're gonna be out here in the elements all day bringing you guys an awesome video. Stick around, who knows what's gonna happen. Yep, he's on there. Oh, oh my God. What was that? Oh my God, you guys. What a rip off. Literally. I didn't know what to do with my hands there. I just got Salamola. There's no way I have bait left. Oh my God. That gave me chills. What a big hit. Oh my God. I didn't want to set the hook too early. The method that we're using to try to catch these things today is a thing called back bouncing. And the way I do it is almost like back bounce drifting. And this is something you can do from a motorboat, from a drift boat, and honestly from the bank if you're given the right hole. And I'm actually putting my bait out behind us with a little weight, getting that those eggs, that sand shrimp and eggs down the Arnold shrimp and egger, and slowly backing it down into the fish. And so the beauty of that is it holds it in front of those fish's face. And it's the bite. I'm doing this all mainly for the bite. It's a very effective method. But when you actually hook these fish, it is just mono e mono, hand to hand combat. And really, in my opinion, there's nothing quite like the take using this method, which I just missed. Oh my God. <sighs> I got all Yankee poo on that one, guys. Total Yankee poo. Pulled it right away from him, but he hit it so damn hard, I didn't know what to do. Pretty sure I have no bait left again. Oh, 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 that feels smoky. Feels like a little fish. The first hit did not. Feeding it to him, feeding it, feeding it. Uh, it seems small. I think I'm getting small bit. It's actually on there. Oh, it was a leaf the whole time. No, it's sculpting. Whoa, what a hog of a sculpting. Now these things suck, everybody. This is a, a sculpin. This is a fish that lives on the bottom of the river. They're native to all these rivers in the Northwest and we call them little mini lingcod. But all they really do, the only thing they're good for, one is cleaning up the river bottom. They're actually pretty healthy for the ecosystem, but they sure as heck like to steal all your eggs. That one got a free meal today. Later, dude. Okay, here we go. This is it. I can feel it. I feel the tingle in my elbow here. Tingling elbows. Yep, 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 I'm getting bit. Got him. Oh God, that's huge. Oh my God. Oh my God, I gotta get away from this log jam. Gotta get away from the log jam, guys. Oh, what a bite. Took a few passes in there. A lot of times I feel like you gotta present that bait to them a few times, kind of get them fired up. Let them smell those eggs. Kind of get to know them a little bit, you know? Holy crap, that thing hit hard and it feels huge. This is gonna be a delicate operation, guys. I'm doing this all by myself. That's a big head shake. That's a big head shake. Oh my God. Okay, get away from the logs, get away from the logs. Oh, oh he's gonna run. <laughs> Somehow, some way, I'm gonna have to do this whole process myself. Oh God, oh God, oh God, he's coming at me, he's coming at me. <laughs> Fly bash, Fly bash, everybody. Oh, it was a leaf the whole time. Ah, he didn't. Oh, that's a good fish, guys. Oh man, that's a good fish. Stay down, stay down, you big guy. Oh, I'm hungry already. This thing's working up an appetite. This is a really good fish, you guys. Looks like a Chinook salmon, king salmon. Well, there's two different kinds of species, basically, and they're the same species, but two different types of salmon in this river. They get Thule salmon, which is a, a wild strain that we want to let go and let spawn and their meat's not as good. We don't, oh my God. Oh my God. I'm getting chills. I'm getting chills. This is a really good fish. Oh my God. Okay, we got him in a good spot here. Got a lot of room to work with. Total chaos. 
total chaos. This is the definition of multitasking right here. Fighting, driving, talking, netting, everything. I love working for Emil. I tell you, the fall is my absolute favorite. There's nothing like the fall colors, the fish in the river, the mushrooms in the woods, and just all the fun you can go have. Okay, here we go, here we go. Darn it. So this is a Thule salmon, you guys. You can tell by the way it is. But this is one that we are not gonna eat. But, what an awesome fight. Okay, he's going to the other side. He's taking us to the other, get down. He's coming back over, he's coming back over. Using both sides. Here we go. Come on, baby. Come on. Hopefully I don't break my rod. Oh God, this thing is so strong. We only got a couple of yards left before we're gonna be in a tail out and wreck the boat. Oh, this is live action. This is live action. Oh, oh my God. This thing is kicking my butt, everybody. I'm working up a sweat here. Oh, it's so heavy. Goodness gracious almighty. Oh my God, it's so heavy. My arm's cramping, everyone. I'm cramping. Shouldn't have eaten a, I need some potassium. Should've eaten a banana. Got it. Oh. Woo! What a fight. What a beautiful creature. Man, that thing is strong. What an incredible creature this is. I'm gonna get him unhooked. Got a really great hook placement to release this thing. Don't want these things to swallow the bait. So ultimately, it won't go so well for him. Ah, man, that mustad hook is so buried in there. Got it. There he is, everybody. A beautiful specimen of a false Chinook. Truly salmon, you can see the huge adipose fin and the really obvious spots on the tail is what really defines and is, makes it easy to identify these things. Big old gnarly teeth. Thank you so much, buddy. We'll see you later. Whew, right on. Not exactly what we were looking for, but a fish nonetheless. Let's get back up in there and see if we can find an eater. All right, everyone, a little change of scenery. Fresh beta eggs, new hole, new fish. Let's make this happen. One eternity later. Got him, got him. Oh yeah, 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 finally, finally. finally. Finally, oh he's burning, he's burning, he's burning more All right everybody, thank the Lord. It has been brutal out here today. The wind will not stop blowing, the rain won't stop falling, and it has been a really, really tough fight. We got those first ones right away. Oh God, he's under the boat, he's under the boat. We gotta get him around it. Oh, we got wood over here, we got wood over here. Oh, perfect, beautiful little fish, beautiful little coho. Come on now. Oh God, oh God, he's on the boat. Chaos. Oh, chaos! Chaos, he's jumping. Oh, chaos. Oh, God, I really want this, guys. We need this. Okay, here we go. Let me get him in the net. Oh, God, I almost got him. That was close. That was close. Oh. Wow. Thank the creator for that one, man. With the tough conditions, it was really tough to get down today. The arch nemesis of a fisherman this time of year are all the leaves in the river. And with the wind blowing like this, and the time of year that it is, all these big leaves are flying into the river, and it's making it super, super hard to fish. Let's make sure this is a hatchery. It is indeed. Yes, everybody. High five, world. We got dinner. Woo! Laura, there he is, everybody. We'll call him dinner. Let's hit the woods.
All right, everybody, we made it to the big bad woods. Really what we're looking for when we're trying to find a place to look for these mushrooms is the age of tree. I look to look for a stand of timber that's about 20 to 30 years old and that's been logged before. Seems to me that a lot of the times the most mushrooms grow or that ground has been disturbed at one point in time. And then somewhere that doesn't get a lot of light. It keeps a lot of moisture underneath that tree cover. Kind of just like what you're seeing here. Where you see how this place has a lot of open cover along the ground and mainly that is just so you can see those mushrooms on the ground. A lot of times these things aren't even all the way over the surface of the ground. And so you have to be able to see the ground itself to be able to identify these mushrooms. So let's get our Lambrophites going. Let's get through these woods. Let's see if we can find us some mushrooms. Okay, spot number one was a bust. One really important thing to remember when you're mushroom picking is to keep moving around a lot. Covering a lot of ground is the best way to find a lot of mushrooms. So I give it about 10 to 15 minutes, maybe walk a quarter mile in each direction of the truck from every spot I check, and then I keep moving. And I work my way from low elevation, up in elevation, up the mountain. Because at times, those mushrooms will grow best at certain climates going up the mountain. So spot number one's over, we're going higher. Okay, here goes spot number two. Little darker, little deeper, just as wet. Man, what a super soaker of a day. I tell you, the elements can be the hardest thing to deal with this time of year. This year especially. We mentioned it earlier. Oh, little smell something. What's little smell? Little smell something, everybody. He's trailing something. I think he smells, smells an elk or a deer or something. Let's find out. Ooh, we got some fungal life. Little, little mushrooms here. So you notice a super clear undergrowth. Some cool little milk cats. But you notice how open it is in here, but still really thick. So it's moist all the time. There's always a lot of decaying wood and falling, you know, pine needles and leaves and different stuff that actually feeds these mushrooms. What the mushrooms grow out of is a thing called mycelium. And mycelium is a, is a fungus that grows underground and it's been around for millions and millions of years. And pretty much every mushroom in the world grows out of that mycelium. Some mushrooms grow out of logs and stuff, but these mushrooms that we're looking for grow out of that dense undergrowth and that fungus layer that's called mycelium. Come on mushrooms, where are you? Come here mushrooms. Ooh, here's some oyster mushrooms. Beautiful, beautiful oysters. Oh wow, look at them all. Look at all these oysters. It's moister than an oyster out here. Now these guys, these are what are called oyster mushrooms and they are absolutely freaking delicious. Almost as good as chanterelles. So we might abort mission here. I'm gonna pick these. We're gonna keep looking for some shanies, but this is awesome. Total surprise, but I am not complaining because these things are absolutely delicious. Oh, wow. Oh, they smell delicious too. Look how beautiful that little flower is. Now oyster mushrooms usually grow out of alder stumps. And I believe that's probably what this must be then. This is the decomposing alder, but they almost always grow out of stumps and not out of the ground. So super lucky to have found these. Nice. Wow. What a beautiful little bouquet of them. Look at that knife nice and deep in there. Nice rough. So cool. Oh man, awesome. Oh, it smells so good. Oh, what a good find. I love it. That's my favorite part of mushroom picking is just the unknown, especially in the fall. There's so many different species of edible mushrooms out there. And I talk to a lot of people out there who say, man, I would never go pick wild mushrooms because I just don't know what is what and if I could eat any of them and I don't want to get sick. The easiest way I would say to go out and get familiar with picking wild mushrooms is become very familiar with the certain kinds that you're looking for, whether it be chanterelles or, or shaggy manes or oyster mushrooms like this, and pay close attention to what those characteristics are. And the other thing that I always say is if you pick it and it doesn't smell like you wanna eat it right then and there, don't eat it at all. These things smell so delicious already before they're even cooked. And that's the telltale sign that you're in the right place and picking the right mushroom. gonna be so delicious with that salmon so so good there they are pretty good little haul there all right spot number two is a win no chanterelles yet we found some oysters we're halfway to our meal 
All we need now is a couple chanterelles and it's a perfect day. Back on the truck, on to the next spot. Let's wish us luck, addicts. I wanna see some comments below whether or not any of you out there have ever picked any wild mushrooms. These kind of mushrooms grow all over the world. There's wild edible mushrooms on every continent, in every country, on every section of the earth. I like to do it when it's not quite so wet out here, but we're doing this for you addicts and because I love to do it anyway. So comment below, let's see what you guys love to do. Let's go find some more mushrooms. Here goes spot number three. All right, spot number three looks freaking perfect. Oh man, it's getting dark out here. It's crazy because it's only three o'clock, but with this gnarly storm today, the lighting is so incredibly low. And especially once you get in the stick timber like this, a lot of times a little bit sunnier day makes it a lot easier to see the mushrooms. And another tip I have for you guys out there if you're mushroom picking, and if you're not a seasoned mushroom picker and you haven't done much of it, one of the easiest ways to find these things and a good method to hunt for these things is to always search uphill. It's a lot easier to see under stuff. It's a lot easier to see the mushrooms poking up out of the ground halfway. And all in all, it's just a lot easier to pick the mushrooms if you work a zigzag pattern going uphill all the time. So that's what we're gonna do here. Don't really have much of a choice. It's pretty hilly up there. Let's see if we can find some. Oh my God. 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 The hell with chanterelles. Look what we just found. Oh my God. My favorite mushroom in the entire freaking world, everybody. This is a cauliflower mushroom, or like I like to call it, the Bob Ross. Littles, where you going, dude? Where are you going? We found it. We found it. And I'm pretty sure I just see a chanterelle over there, but I honestly don't even care right now. This right here is a cauliflower mushroom, and it is the very best tasting mushroom on the freaking face of the earth. Today is complete. This is so awesome. I'm gonna just keep showing. I can't stop showing you guys. I just want to touch it and pet it and love it and caress it. So this one, everybody, this is a mushroom, obviously, that you cannot mistake. It's huge. It looks like a freaking afro, a white afro, and it's absolutely delicious. I'm gonna get my knife out and cut it, and I wish we had smell-o-vision because you guys, if you could smell and taste this thing right now, you'd be drooling. Everybody would have drool all over the floor. There'd be puddles of drool everywhere. I'm cutting it. We're eating it. So it's important here to get way underneath this thing. That root goes down into the dirt. And a lot of times you'll find these mushrooms, again, right next to an old stump or a, a rotten tree or of some sort. There it is, everyone. There it is. Yeah. Oh my God, I can't wait to eat this thing. Let's go find a spot to make a fire. It's chow time. Addicts, we found the glory hole. As I was cutting this, I looked uphill. As I've said, I think I see a chanterelle, and sure enough, there it is. This is a three mushroom day. Triage of mushrooms. Here's the shanty. So you see it kind of growing under the ground like I talked about earlier. These things can be really hard to see sometimes because of that. There it is, and you can tell a chanterelle by the way it is. It doesn't have any gills. You see those ridges like that? And those are not gills. And what gills are, are those like small little like slits underneath the hood of the mushroom. And if you find a chanterelle that you think is a chanterelle and it has gills and doesn't have like this leathery look to it with those small little lines, it's not a chanterelle. So guys and girls, thank you so much for sticking around today and toughening this one out. It has been a brutal day, but I am so pleased we accomplished all of our goals. Now it's time to cook an absolute perfect meal. Oh my God, there's another one. Oh my God, best day ever. I love these things. Tony's all freaked out. He thinks we're killing an animal. Oh my God, look at it. Look at it, it's so perfect. Yes, tiny, yes, yes, buddy. Oh my God, there will be no mushroom left behind. Not today, addicts, not today. Well, this one's a little bit more on the rotten side, but we can cut a lot of that out. What you'll start to see is like this kind of soft rotten part here and when we go to clean these things it takes a little bit while it takes a little while to clean them i'm going to clean them better at home than i am out here in the woods to cook them for you guys i'm going to end up eating some pine needles and dirt today but that's okay it's worth it it's all for you addicts out there but i'm going to cut a little bit of that wormy stuff out so that rotten stuff because you can see that's what makes those things go rotten see that worm literal like just normal worms but we're going to cut a lot of that stuff out and that's normally how you're going to tell a, a bad mushroom is if it has any of these lines and you can see in the core of the mushroom you can kind of see these little holes in that discoloration that's what's going to tell you that those worms have worked their way in there but nevertheless what a score oh my god this is awesome
Man, Alex, what an absolutely marvelous piece of fish. Big shout out to the creator for blessing us with this one today. I'll lay that thing in there. Oh man, what a special fish. Incredible colored me. We're gonna go really light on the seasoning here. We wanna taste the full flavor of this fish. So we're going simply just some fresh cracked pepper and a little bit of mama seasoning. Nice little dose of it there. There it is. We're ready to cook. All right, now for the mushrooms, the real key is, normally I'd have some water to wash these things off with, but a little unprepared and there's no puddles nearby. So I'm just gonna take my paper towel and I'm just gonna brush all that dirt off and all those pine needles. Obviously pine needles aren't gonna hurt you, but I'm gonna leave those oyster mushrooms pretty whole. But really, you just wanna get as much of that dirt and pine needles off of it as you can. Really, just cause you don't wanna be eating the pine needles. It'll kind of ruin the flavor of those things. That is not getting the cleanest, but you know, a little fiber never hurt no one. Strip those things up just a little bit there. I'm gonna do the same thing with my shanty. It's gonna be a little bit harder to get clean, but once again, whatever. A little bit of fiber never hurt no one. I'm gonna take off some of that rotten part. Get that bad boy in there. For the old Bob Rosser, this is gonna be the hardest one to get clean. And I don't think we're gonna be able to do much with it. But whatever. I'm gonna eat some pine needles today, everybody. It's gonna be the pine needle challenge. How many can he eat and survive? And these guys, I'm just gonna flake out in these little chunks like this. I am so, so happy we found this bad boy. And there it is, guys. My medley of wild mushrooms. It's gonna go perfect with this dish. Now, we pick the rocks for our fire. There we go. All right, the time has come, everybody. I'm gonna remove a couple of pieces here. There it is. I'm gonna go skin side down first kind of cook it from the bottom up and then right at the end of it when I start to see it getting pretty done I'm gonna flip that thing over put a nice char on the other side of that and then we're gonna be chowing all right it's looking like it's cooked about halfway through I'm starting to see some of that color change right in that thick part it's not quite cooked yet so we're gonna flip that bad boy over let her finish out That is done. Listen to it sizzle. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but it's saying, eat me, eat me. So what we're gonna do, and we're gonna keep this right over the fire so that it stays warm. We're gonna just go right above the pan here, but we're gonna put those mushrooms in. And it's really important, all of you out there who have never cooked wild mushrooms before, you have to simmer them down first. So you have to put them in on the heat. You have to let that, all that water evaporate out of those mushrooms and then you add your butter and seasoning. A lot of times people add their seasoning and their butter before they let that stuff simmer down and that'll completely take all the flavor away from the mushrooms and that seasoning or butter that you're gonna put in it. So I'm gonna let these sizzle down. You'll see them start to produce a bunch of water and once all that water is gone, we're gonna add our butter and then we're gonna add our seasoning. You guys see how there's no moisture left in the bottom of that pan. Exactly what we want. Oh, that's starting to smell so good. I'm blind. I'm blind. I'm blind. Can't see. Okay, we're better. Mom always said you got a half stick of butter to anything and it'll taste good. And add just a little bit of seasoning. We do not want to over season stuff like this, you guys. Never, ever, ever add too much salt to your wild mushrooms because you can't take it out. So this is mostly garlic, a little bit of black pepper. This is a seasoning a client's mom made for me. Thank you so much, Caden and Caden's mom. You're the best. It says for everything, including wild mushrooms. So here we go. We're almost ready to eat. Wow. Okay, everyone, let's eat. Wow, everybody, look at this meal. Look at this meal. Some of the freaking freshest salmon you can find paired with the freshest mushrooms you can possibly find. Let's see how it tastes. A little combo. Wow. Okay. 
I'm gonna try the chanterelle. Mmm. Not as good as the cauliflower, but not bad at all. Absolutely brutal conditions out here today, you guys. I thank you so much for sticking around throughout this day. It took a lot of river miles fish and a lot of road miles covered to find these mushrooms and complete this amazing meal. Okay, now for the oyster. Mmm. You can tell why they call them oyster mushrooms. They taste a lot like an oyster itself. Let's pair that with the fish once again. Mmm. Mmm. Everyone out there, I wish you were here sharing this with me. One thing I want to say about today is how we never gave up. There were so many times we didn't show it on camera, me being a crybaby, but we were getting our butts kicked out there all day long. The weather was horrible, the wind was blowing, and we had to really work our butts off to make this video. But in the end, we accomplished every single goal that we had, and it really turned out. And the moral of the story is stay positive when you're out there. Keep trying, keep trying, keep trying, even if it's your only day to go out and have fun. Persistence, hard work, and never giving up and keeping a positive attitude can help you have a day just like we had today. And what a beautiful day it's been. I want to thank you, addicts, so much for being along for the ride today. If you want to see more awesome catching cooks just like this one, go up here and click this link to this next video. Go down here, hit subscribe, turn those bells on. Please give this video a thumbs up and comment below, and you can be the comment of the day, just like this person right here. Thank you so much for tuning in, addicts. You stay fishy. We'll see you out there.